Thanks everyone for joining us. Hello everyone, my name is Francis Narek and I'm the National Director of Certification here at ACSM. If you're a student or newly certified professional, one of the most important steps in life is to align with an employer who champions professional development throughout your career. And that is one of the many reasons why ACSM has developed a strategic partnership with Exos. Today we'll be getting an inside view of Exos and what drives their organization. Uh, today's presenter is Tristan Rice. Tristan is a performance specialist with over 10 years with the company in various roles. During his time as a performance specialist, he's worked with uh, athletes of myriad of sports in, uh, in various levels, including Olympic, professional, amateur, recreational, and youth athletes. In addition, over five years working with the general population. Exos was founded in 1999 and has become a leader in proactive health and performance, trusted by athletes, the military, community organizations, and innovative companies worldwide. Exos designs and delivers health and performance game plans that guide people to achieve higher levels of success. With world-class partners, facilities, technologies, and specialists spanning six continents, Exos is progressing the, the intelligence behind human performance wherever necessary. Please use the question function, and we'll get to your questions at the end of the webinar. And without further ado, Tristan, the floor is yours. Thanks for that, Francis. Um, go ahead and show the screen just real quick. Okay. So I want to just run through a couple quick slides to give a little bit of an idea of kind of who we are um, and a little bit of where we came from and, and what we do and, and sort of where we're going looking into the future. Uh, Exos was founded in 1999 uh, as a company called Athletes Performance and it was founded on, on the principle that, that we have as health and fitness professionals a responsibility to the people that come to us. Um, fundamentally, when, when someone comes to us, when a client comes and seeks out our services, we have, that, that's based on the premise that I have some subject matter expertise, for example, that they think may value, may be beneficial to them in one way or another. And, and, and really, the structure to that relationship is not all that different to the structure of the relationship that I have to my auto mechanic. When there's something wrong with my car, I would go and take my car to the auto mechanic, trusting that they would have a better understanding of the mechanical engineering and the inner workings of the internal combustion engine than I do. And so because they have a better understanding of that, I then pay them for their subject matter expertise. They then render a service, and that's it, right? I take my car back, the job is done. Um, you know, the relationship usually ends up being something like, I hope I never see you again, and that's it. And to a certain extent, that's kind of the relationship that we have to our clients, that when clients come to us, there may be something about their health that they don't like. There may be something about their health, there may be something about their body, there may be something about their performance that they know that they need to change. Either the doctors told them that they need to lower their cholesterol or their blood pressure or triglycerides. Maybe they've just gained some weight since college. Maybe they want to go and train for a triathlon or to hike the Grand Canyon or, or to do something. But what they understand is that they don't have the necessary subject matter expertise to bridge that gap from where they currently are, point A, to where they want to be or where they want to end up, or point B. And so it's our responsibility to help them to bridge that divide from point A to point B. And that responsibility is based on the fact that that person has opened up a certain vulnerability to us. They've opened up and they've told us and they've admitted and they've owned that there is something about them that they wish worked better, that they wish was uh, leaner, some number that was lower, some number that was higher. But that, that fundamentally means that the relationship that we have to our clients is based on trust. They have trusted us to help them to bridge the gap from point A to point B. And all too often what happens in our industry is that client or excuse me, coaches and personal trainers will forget the structure of that relationship. They think that, that because that client has come to me that they then want to come to the Tristan show, right? And they wanna, they wanna know all the things that I have to know and they wanna do the things that I like to do. And they, it, it, but that's just not true, that's just not the case. Fundamentally, the clients that have come to us have come to us to achieve something specific to them, and they then see us as a catalyst, right, an alchemist, so to speak, to get them to help them move from point A to point B because they may know where they want to go, but they simply just don't understand how to get there. And so we have a responsibility to help them to walk that path. 
being a strength coach, being a personal trainer fundamentally is a very simple thing. We move people from point A to point B. The first step in that process is understanding where it is that you want to go. What is your point B? What is the goal? What is the target? And that starts at the very beginning of a relationship. Hi, my name's Tristan. I'm going to be your coach. How can I help you? And from there, I just stop talking. I just stop talking and I listen. And in that initial athlete or client and coach interview, I am two ears and two eyes and one mouth. Because ultimately, the relationship that we have to our clients, although similar to the relationship that I may have to my auto mechanic, is different in a very fundamental way. Because the work that we do with our clients is meant to impact the time that they are not with us. If you're with me, for example, for one hour a day, even five days a week, which is quite a lot, you're still only with me over the course of a seven-day week for a total of five hours. Over seven days, I get five hours of exposure. We talk about the 23-in-1 rule, how you may be with me in the gym, on the floor, one hour a day. Well, that still leaves 23 hours to go and mess up all the good that we do. That one hour ends up being about 4% of the total 24-hour cycle. And so it's my responsibility, if I'm meant to help you move from point A to point B, to not only keep in mind what point B is, what's the target, what's the goal, what is the it that brought you into the gym today, but it's my responsibility to a certain extent to teach you the things that I know, the things that you sought me out for as a subject matter expert, so that over those other 23 hours in that 24-hour day, you're able to carry the shield. You're able to continue to live the message. You're able to continue the work that we do in the gym as a foundation to build something strong on top of. And so the, the relationship that we have to our clients, while similar as subject matter experts to an auto mechanic, at a fundamental level is very different. Because ultimately it's about a responsibility to help people get to where they're going. And as I said, the first step in that process is identifying what the target is. Hi, my name's Tristan. I'm going to be your coach. How can I help? From that point on, it is my responsibility to help shepherd that person, to help guide that client along the path from point A to point B. Because once we've figured out where we're going, then we need to figure out where we currently are. Once we've identified what the target is, let's think about what the, where you currently are. What is point A? so that we can then appreciate the gap. If you say that you wanna lose 125 pounds in four months, in three months, maybe we need to recalibrate what that target is. If the, or maybe we need to stretch out your timeline. But in any case, step one, hi, my name's Tristan, I'm gonna be your coach, how can I help? Step two, let's get through some evaluations to see where you currently are. So that step three, I can go build you a program which would serve as a bridge between point A and point B, so that step four, we can work together to walk the yellow brick road to get you from point A to point B. And fundamentally, that is not about me, right? That is a responsibility that my client has trusted me with. That is a responsibility that that person has passed off to me. But the thing that we have to consider is that at the end of the day, the context of the relationship is that the person comes into your gym, your client comes into your session for something that they want to work on. For something that they want to work on as something that they've noticed, as some aspect of their life or their body that they wish was better. And so not only do we have a responsibility to help to guide that person from point A to point B, we have a responsibility to respect the vulnerability that that person, that that client has entered into this relationship into. And the way that, the way that we go from point A to point B is through using the EXOS training system. And the EXOS training system is based on four pillars of performance, and that's mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery. Because the tagline is, every day is game day. So we have to prepare for it, we fuel for it, we train for it, and we rest for it. Every day has an impact. You want to gain fitness, you want to gain strength, you want to improve your cardiovascular function, you want to lose weight, you want to gain muscle mass, you want to 
any goal that you have in terms of fitness, in terms of performance, the way to make it happen, validated by research, the most effective training plan to add muscle mass, to drop, uh, to drop fat mass, the most effective training plan is the one that you stick to. And so every single day that, that a client comes into my gym, I have two goals for you. Number one, when you leave the gym, I want you to feel like you made progress. Every single day, I need to make sure that when my client leaves the gym, irrespective of whether it was a one-on-one -on -one session or if it was a large group with 20 to 30 clients in that session, every single day when you leave the gym, I need you to feel two things. The first is that you feel like you made progress, that you took a step in a positive direction towards your point B. And the second is that you feel better when you leave the gym than when you got there. And the way that we do that on a day-by-day -day basis is through mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery. Because as strength coaches, as personal trainers, we love to live in movement land. Movement being training, movement being exercise, movement being uh, uh, lifting, cardio, these sorts of things. But fundamentally, what we understand is that when you train somebody to a certain extent, that's a little bit like an injury. There's a healing, there's a recovery process that has to happen, that has to be accommodated and incorporated and built into the structure of any effective training plan. Otherwise, your training plan is not going to be effective in the direction that you want it to be. For example, you can't come in and do bench and bicep curls every single day, five out of seven days out of the week, for three to four weeks and expect to continue to make gains in your bench and your biceps. At some point, that, the, that you're going to keep loading straw into the back of that animal, and there's going to be one blade that breaks the camel's back. And so while we love to think about training, while we love to think about sets and reps and intensity and rest times and volume and density and all these sorts of things, fundamentally, we understand that we are deficit spending in the gym, and we've got to provide time to recover from that. And so it's not just about movement, because it's also about recovery. But fundamentally, when it comes to recovery, it's not just about sitting down and resting. There are things that we can do to help to facilitate that process. You think of like the three little pigs in the big bad wolf. Training is the big bad wolf. And I just came and huffed and puffed and blew your house down. And now you have the opportunity to rebuild. And so when you have an opportunity to rebuild, are you going to rebuild out of straw? Or are you going to rebuild out of bricks? Because guess what? The big bad wolf is coming back. And that's nutrition. You come in and do some training. You provide some training stimulus. I know that I've decreased your ability to respond to that same stimulus for a set period of time afterwards. And so I need you to recover. Recovery is about both active and passive elements. Active things being like soft tissue and stretching and maybe hydrotherapy, right? Like cold tubs, maybe <clears throat> compression maybe uh, 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 Easton technologies, these sorts of things. But recovery is also about uh, passive strategies, things that you would be doing otherwise. Let's improve your sleep hygiene. Let's make sure that you're in a dark room. Let's make sure that you, that you have no lights. And if, if you have any lights at all, that is just a simple $8 red light alarm clock that you can get from Target. That also has a USB charging port, which is convenient. Right? Recovery is about active and passive strategies, which can mean things like nutrition. Because nutrition, when it comes to recovery, is how you rebuild your house after the big bad wolf has come and huffed and puffed and blew it down, because he is coming back. And so nutrition has that feedback relationship to training in that it supports a recovery process. Are you gonna support your recovery by, 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 by consuming anti-inflammatory foods, leafy greens, omega-3 fatty acids, these sorts of things? Or are you going to work against your training by having pro-inflammatory foods, stopping at McDonald's on the way home, getting a milkshake, doing these sorts of things? Nutrition has that feedback relationship to training, but nutrition also has a feed-forward relationship to training. Imagine how you would feel if you come into a training session having just had a milkshake versus how you would feel coming into a training session having had, you know, a handful of almonds and some blueberries, 
right? Nutrition has both a feedback relationship to supporting recovery of training that's already happened and also a feed forward relationship to supporting and fueling performance which is yet to come. And so while we love to think about movement and training, we understand that it's not just about that because it's also about recovery. And that we can't just think about recovery as rest because there are things that we have to do. And nutrition supports recovery and training in both a feedback and feed forward relationship. But finally, that mindset is right about the top of that graphic because if that person doesn't believe that I have their best interest in heart, if that person has, has any idea that I may be using them for my own gain, as opposed to respecting and honoring the responsibility of helping move that person from point A to point B, if that person doesn't buy in, then they're not going to listen to anything that I have to say. That mindset piece ends up being the umbrella which helps every client make an effective decision when their alarm goes off at 5.30 for a 6 a.m. session. Mindset is the thing that helps that client to make the decision when their alarm goes off to put their feet on the floor instead of hitting snooze. And that mindset piece is what brought that person into the gym. Hi, my name's Tristan. I'm going to be your coach. How can I help? Coach, I want to decrease my 40 time so that I can increase my signing bonus so that I can get a better contract for my first couple years in the NFL. Fine, we can work with that. Coach, I want to lose weight. I've put on a couple pounds since college. I play, I play pickup ball with the boys on the weekend, and I just don't feel like I'm able to do the things that I used to do. Cool, let's get to work. That mindset piece is where we genuinely sort of respect and honor the goal that the person has come to us with in the first place. Because at the end of the day, we support humans. We have, we have an incredible history and heritage in working with athletes, and we are absolutely honored and humbled to say that. We're absolutely honored to say that something like 30% of the NFL draft picks from 2018 did their combine training with us. But at the end of the day, we're supporting people. Point A to point B, Coach, I want to decrease my 40 time. Coach, I need to add reps to my 225 bench. Coach, I'm a free agent, and I need to do work so that I can pick up another contract. Point A to point B is exactly the same as, Coach, I want to go hike the Grand Canyon. Coach, I want to be able to play with my grandchildren. Coach, it hurts my shoulder when I reach for the coffee cup off the top shelf. We support humans, right? Humans move. Movement is fundamental to the way that we move our bodies over the earth. And so we look at athletes who live in performance land, and we look at people who live in the real world, and we see tons of similarities. Look at both of these images. Sure, you have an athlete on the left who's training in their L drill, likely to go to the NFL draft combine, versus a person on the right just going for a hike. But look at the action that they're in. Look at what's happening in lower body. In both cases, left leg is extended. In both cases, right leg has gone through some pattern of triple flexion. In both cases, there's T-spine and torso rotation to the right. Sure, one is happening at a higher intensity than the other. Sure, one is happening for a longer duration than the other. But at the end of the day, human movement is human movement. And we have been absolutely honored to take the history and heritage that we built working with athletes since 1999 and stretch that into different populations. Stretch that into working with the general population. Hey, you guys work with some of the top athletes in sport to improve their performance. Could you work with me so that it hurts less when I go ride my bike on the weekend? Well, yeah, I guess we can, right? And let's take this system of mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery. Does that work for athletes? Could that work for the general population? Absolutely. Hey, you work with me to keep my body healthy. Could you work with my kid to help them develop their athletic potential so that they then are able to get, a, uh, to get potentially better looks for scholarships to go play in college? Well, sure. Right? Training kids isn't as simple as training little adults. But are there lessons that we can learn 
from Mindset Nutrition Movement Recovery in working with adult athletes and adult general population that we can transfer and we can apply to youth. We look at youth, we look at general population, we look at, we're, we, we've absolutely been honored to work with the, with the military, right? Tactical athletes end up being athletes at the end of the day. The demands are different, but use your body to do a thing. Put weight on and go walk for three hours. Do a 5-10-5 drill in under four and a half seconds. Run a 40. Do a 225 bench. Lower your cholesterol. Drop your body weight. Increase your lean body mass. Mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery is the vehicle that we're able to use to bridge the gap from point A to point B. Because at the end of the day, we support humans who use their body to do things. From 2017, these numbers have obviously increased slightly. But we've come to a point from 1999 where there were six employees. To today, there's over 4,500. We started with one facility on the campus of ASU in Phoenix, Arizona, but now we have over 450 locations. We've had over 2,500 at this point uh, attendees to our on-site education courses and 1.4 million clients that we've impacted on any average workday, which is Monday to Thursday, right? Because the weekend is different. Um, in different parts of the world, Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday. On any average work day, Monday to Thursday, we will train, we will treat uh, through rehab and physical therapy, or we will teach on average one million clients every single day. And it's because, it's because we've had the opportunity to be able to stretch this idea of mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery into different audiences, from athletes to general population to youth to the military, right? We've absolutely been honored to do that. And one of the ways that we've been able to do that is through the, is through the help of our world-class partners. One example is a partner called, uh, is, a, is a company that we partner with called Bridge Athletic. And Bridge Athletic is the training engine, or excuse me, the programming engine that we use to write our programming at our facilities with our clients. If you go ahead, and, and you guys are, are welcome to sign up uh, at the link just below, and we'll pass these slides out as a PDF so that you have access to the content. Use that uh, discount code, and you get yourself a little, bit, uh, a little bit of a discount. But when you sign up at that link, you then would get access to, to the Exos Movement Library. There's over 2,500 movements and counting that we've filmed and built into this engine built into this library that you can then use as a template to copy and paste entire training programs, point A to point B, to copy and paste specific phases, weeks one through three, for example, to copy and paste specific workouts, training day one, to copy and paste specific blocks of any training session, right? The strength block, for example, or to customize and build from scratch your own content. But we've been able to use Bridge and leverage that as a way to work with over a million people every single day. Because now, Coach has the opportunity to be able to have outreach to clients even when you're not in the facility. You might be in the other side of the world. If you can connect to the internet, I can get you your training plan. And when it comes to, when it comes to what we do and the Exos training system, and laying that out in detail, that happens at our education courses. And our education courses happen on-site and also online. On-site, they end up being two to four days, depending on the course that you sign up for. Online, there are many different levels. And you guys, as members of ACSM, through your portal, actually have access to several modules of our online courses so that you're able to go and get a taste, so that you're able to go and make an educated decision as to whether or not you want to sign up for the whole thing. They're modules from two of the courses, two of our flagship courses that we offer online. One, the Exos Performance Specialist, geared more towards performance and athletes. One, the Exos Fitness Specialist, taking that same system of mindset, nutrition, movement, and recovery and applying more specifically towards general population. 
the five modules that you have access to would, 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 would total probably around seven to eight hours of content. And then you can go ahead and use that code ACSM30 to save 30% off any of our online education courses. And this is, this is just a taste, a bit of a taste of what we do. Because we, we have always been, we have always understood that our responsibility is to our clients irrespective of what your game day means, irrespective of what the target is, irrespective of what point B is, we have a responsibility to upgrade lives. And that's a bit about who we are and how you can gain a bit more information. Great job, Kristen. Um, and uh, we have some questions that are coming in. Um, do you have about five minutes to kind of uh, from, for some follow-up questions? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the first questions is, why did you want to work for Exos? So I came into Exos in 2008 as a student. I had another year left of school, and I did. I took an internship over the summer. Um, the idea was that I wanted to work with athletes. Um, the idea being, you know, that there's the motivation issue wasn't an issue um, that ended up not being true. But I wanted to work with athletes in performance. And so I grew up in Los Angeles. We have a facility at uh, the StubHub Arena um, on the campus of Cal State. San, uh, I forget which Cal State it is. Um, but it's in Carson. And so I was there over the summer uh, to really sort of take the information which I learned at university, which was phenomenal foundational information, but then actually apply it. For example, I had, I could tell you in exact detail, every step of the Krebs cycle and every step of the electron transport chain, I could tell you nothing about what to do about it, right? Or how to influence it. And so the idea was to have this sort of capstone experience of putting it together in actionable, uh, in an actionable sort of setting. Um, and that then just sort of started and guided me down a path of continuous improvement and discovery and questioning that hasn't yet ended, and I don't imagine will anytime soon. That's awesome. Um, another couple questions for you is just like, um, and I hear this from employers a lot, that they want folks to be work ready by the time they, they uh, get to their programs. So we always talk about certifications. There's, there's, a, there's a plethora of, of acronyms you can get after your name getting relevant experience, but they want them to have practical experience when they get there. What are uh, the, the resources that Exos is, uh, can provide um, to really kind of give that practical experience, like moving to evaluation, program development, et cetera? Yeah, sure. Um, and and, and we, certainly, uh, we certainly add to that in offering some of that, the, the alphabet soup that you can, you can apply to your name and apply to your title. Um, it, it's a bit of a catch-22, isn't it? Because you can't get a job without experience, but you can't get experience without a job. And so, you know, that's really where the value of our, our uh, education courses and also our internships um, sort of come in, because specifically in the intern, because but it, it's, all, it's all practically focused. So in our, in our education courses, even online, it's meant to be theoretical supported by practical. And, you know, so online there are practical sessions which you're meant to go and actually take yourself through to practice some of the information. Um, in our on-site courses, it ends up being roughly about a 50-50 split between lecture and practical. And in the internship over the course of 12 to 16 weeks, you know, it's about immersion into the system. It's about immersion into coaching. And so, you know, the idea being that we're able to help the students that come and take our internships to help the mentors who come and take our courses, either on-site or online, develop the practical ability to apply some of these things. Um, you know, based fundamentally on the, on, on the premise that, you know, coach, I want to improve my fitness. That's an easy question or request to make, but that's an incredibly difficult request to fulfill, right? And so all of our courses, on-site, online, and internship, end up being, um, you know, a, a rough sort of estimation of the, the way that we answer, the way that we organize the response to that request. Yep. There's, uh, we have a time for about two more questions. Another one is uh, really kind of wanted to find out what opportunities they can get for, uh, where to find out about the internships and employment opportunities. Uh, where can yep. they find out more about Exos uh, in that regard? Yeah. So, 
so the web the website is a really great place to go and just kind of search around. It it, it is more updated and up to date than I would be with information about where we work and what we do and who we work with and all that sort of thing. That's just teamexos.com. Um, the link there on the screen, teamexos.com slash education would take you specifically to our on-site online education courses. Um, interest in careers and sort of job opportunities, teamexos, including internships, teamexos.com slash careers. Um, you know, and that would take you to the portal of open listings uh, worldwide because it, it, it's much more than just U.S. based at this point. And we have a link to that on the acsm.org website. If you go under uh, acsm.org uh, and then backslash get, get and stay certified, uh, we have a link directly to Exos there as well. It gives a little bit about uh, the background of Exos and those career opportunities. Um, I guess another one, this is this is kind of like combining a couple questions that we have is just like, you know, what are those characteristics that Exos looks for in interns? Uh, and, and, um, and, and further than that is, you know, characteristics of those who really succeed in ex with the, with Exos. You know, I think so. I think that there are two answers to that. Um, and the first I would borrow from Mike Boyle, something that I saw him post, I, I don't know, probably on Instagram a couple months ago. Where he said about hiring new staff, I can teach you, I can teach you to be smart. I can't teach you to be nice. Right. So we don't need people. We don't need people to have, uh, you know, double masters and all kinds of certifications and that sort of thing. We can give people the on the job knowledge and experience that they need, considering that you meet some minimum criteria. Um, what we need is for you to be willing um, to hear the messages that are going to be given to you, right? To be open to criticism, to be open uh, to coaching, to be open to mentorship with more senior coaches, with more senior people, to be, to put it another way, to be willing to question the things that you hold true. Because at the, at a basic level, right, the thing, the quality that we find to be most beneficial in our employees is a quality of humility, right? People don't, clients don't come to us because of us. Clients may come to us because of some history, may come to us because of some heritage, but clients have ultimately come to us because there's something that they want to accomplish. And so I need to have the humility to say that while we would have trained about a third of the uh, NFL draft class of 2018, they're not our athlete, right? They came to work with us for the combine so that they could go and improve their performance and get to their point B. And so the, the biggest thing that we, that we really look for is humility as exemplified by people who are um, who are willing to learn, by people who are willing to question the things that they hold to be true, uh, by by uh, people who are never satisfied with the answers that they have to their own questions. Because I've been I've been with this company now for over ten years, and I still haven't come to the bottom of the training system. Um, because it movement and the human animal and body is a complex system of systems. And so we look for people who are always willing to question, not only question the things that they know, but also take the responsibility to seek out the answers on their own. Because I can teach you to speak, I can teach you to be smart, but I can't teach you to be nice. That's a, that's a great point. Um, so we are actually unfortunately out of time. We have probably about 10 more questions that are popped up. Um, and Tristan, what I can do is I can send you those, those list of questions. And if you can uh, provide a response to those. We'll post those on our website, and, uh, and this is a, a great treat for our ACSM certified professionals. Uh, we we are always striving to, to provide more and more insights, uh, what employers are looking for, uh, how to succeed in the profession, um, and I look forward to continuing this relationship with Exos, and um, we'll be emailing out the recording of this webinar and the response from Tristan after this. Uh, look forward to doing more. And Tristan, any 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 final par parting words? Uh, it, I, I just I appreciate the opportunity to come on and have a chat. Um, I appreciate you all who have signed up and, and logged on, taking the time out of your day. Uh, I know that you may have given up a client potentially to come to this. I appreciate you, you, you taking the time. It, it, it's always a massive, massive honor and incredibly humbling that people seek us out as sources for continued education. Um, so thank you for that. And, and please let us know if there's anything that we can do to continue to support you in your journey um, of upgrading your life and uh, of, of, of upgrading your life on your own path of continuous improvement. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.